Today I got a Dell 14 inch 2-in-1 laptop. Um, I'm going to open it up, do some upgrading, and I'm going to show you how I do it. Let's get started. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I have a brand new Dell 14 inch 2-in-1 laptop. It's a brand new model. It's pretty nice. It's got the new 11th generation Intel Core i3. It's actually the 1115G4 processor, 11th gen. It comes with a coarse touch screen, 1366 by 768. Um, it's not full HD, unfortunately. It has a 128 gigabyte NVMe SSD, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, um, backlit keyboard. It's got the Wi-Fi 6 plus Bluetooth. It's got a 3-cell, 40-watt-hour battery. Uh, it's not a bad little laptop. It's a Dell Inspiron 5406. So what I'm going to do today is some upgrading. Um, like I said, it's only got 128 gig SSD. Here's my power cord. We don't need that. It's got 128 gig SSD and 8 gigs of RAM. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a match set, some Samsung RAM in here. I'm going to bump it up to 16 gigs. I, I know there's two available slots in here. So we'll end up with 16 gigs instead of 8. And I'm going to put in a brand new Crucial P5 series M.2 NVMe drive, a 1 terabyte instead of a 128. Um, so, what I'm going to do first though, before I even turn it on, is I'm going to open it up. I'm going to remove the SSD that's in there and I'm going to, I'm going to clone. I'm going to do a clone, sorry. And I'm going to use the free Acronis True Image 2020 right from Crucial's website. It's proprietary. It's only going to work, that version will only work with their drives. So I'm going to do it a way I don't normally do it, but I'm going to do this just for the sake of the video so I can demonstrate that it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to take out all the screws. I won't bore you with that, so I'm going to pop those out real quick. All right, guys, I took out all these screws here. They're all the same length. Um, they're quite small. I'm using a number zero Phillips or a PH zero, number zero Phillips screwdriver. Uh, the three, all the new Dells are like this, big or small laptops. Along the screws along the back, they don't actually come all the way out of the chassis or out of the hole. You have to unthread them. I left this one here so you can kind of see what I mean. As you unthread it, it kind of lifts it up and it just kind of breaks it loose back here. Don't panic for them not coming out of the holes. You got to, just got to make sure they're all the way unthreaded. As you unscrew it, it kind of, there you can tell that it's unthreaded now. So it's just important you know those screws are basically going to, going to stay right where they're at. So I'm going to get my little black or my little triangle spudger here and get it in a corner here. It's already popped up. These should come off quite easy here. As you can see I'm using very almost no force at all. <clears throat> Always be careful about where your ports are. You don't end up breaking the side chassis here. I'm just kind of putting slight upward pressure on it here. Once, before you actually get inside, guys, I always point out you have to be protected from static electricity. Make sure you're wearing a wristband or an anti-static pad or surface that you're working on. My bench tops and my floors and my shop are all anti-static. Never had a problem. So you can see how it just kind of pops loose. And these screws stay right in there, so we're just going to carefully lift it off. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clone. It's got the factory install a window that's not up to date but I'll take care of that when I'm done. It's got the factory install. Um, of course here's our battery. Our M.2 drive is underneath this bracket right over here. This protective shield we'll get to in a second. Our two RAM slots are right here. So first thing I'm going to do though guys is I'm going to disconnect my battery. Um, and I never use metal tools in here. I always use these plastic spudger type tools. Now this battery you can disconnect from either the motherboard or you can actually disconnect it from the actual battery right here. This would pop up and this one here actually pulls back. They got all this tape and whatnot on here. Let's see if we can get that off of there. And if you're real careful and just kind of jiggle it back, you can see how it just kind of comes right out. But I, I disconnected them from here. It just pops up. Either way, make sure you disconnect your battery. 
And always, I always tell people, make sure you use good quality tools, your screwdrivers, any kind of tools you're using in here. You don't want to booger up your screw heads or anything like that. So here's our two RAM slots. Here's an empty one, DDR4. I'm going to go ahead and pop in one of our Samsung 8 gig sticks because we're going to bump it up to 16. This is 2666 memory. And you can see it only goes in one way. You have to kind of hold this shield up here and you got to get it in the slot here key to go one way, make sure it goes in evenly, then clip it down. Just want to make sure it's in all the way. I'm not happy with that. Just a second. Just got to make sure it goes in all the way. There, these little clips kind of like pop back in to hold the RAM down. So now we're going to remove the 8 gig stick that's over here. And my bench tops are scratch proof, so Please don't leave me a comment that I'm scratching a brand new laptop. Thank you. Pop this out. Put another 8 gig stick in. Now, I've done a couple of these already, and this will support 32 gigs of DDR4 no problem, because I've done it, and it works. But in this case, we're going with 16 gigs. Two 8 gigs, we should have dual channel. It's not a gaming laptop. But it's a pretty, pretty nice little laptop with a little bit of kick. So now we got our RAM in there. Now over here is a shield we have to pop up. There's one screw right here that we have to take out. So I'm oh, looking for my number zero Phillips screwdriver. It's just a protective shield. <clears throat> I'm taking out this M.2 drive. We're going to clone it outside the computer. I'm going to put the new drive in here. This is going to go into an enclosure I have. Now this you can see it's a 22, not an 80. We're putting in a 20, 2280 which is going to go here. This is a 2242. That screw's not tight all the way, is it? So, let's set that there. Pop this out. Save it because everything we want is on this drive. We're going to clone it to the new one terabyte drive, which is right here. But before we put this in here, we have to move this little mounting bracket from here up to here. And it's a little tricky. Not real tricky, it's just tiny. So we have to take out a screw. And this just is just going to lift right up. I believe it's going to set right. We actually have to flip it around the opposite way, sorry. It's just small guys, that's all. I always struggle with these because they're so small. Once you get it in place, you can just push it down. Ah! Oh, almost had it. Done several of these, but I've never got it in the first time. There we go. So just like that. Now we're going to put our little tiny screw back in. It'll accommodate the 2280 drive now. And they left us just enough room. So now I'll take my P5 Crucial NVMe drive. With nothing on it, brand new out of the box. Right in here. Lines up nicely. <clears throat> Put our screw in. Ah, hate when I do that. Yeah, the customer that's bought this, they just want more than 128 gigs of storage. Snug it in there. All right, guys. We got our new 16 gigs of RAM, two eights, dual channel, our one terabyte drive. Now we're going to hook our battery back up because we're done in here. <clears throat> just be gentle with this. Got to flip it around. We're just going to just make sure it goes in all the way, nice and snug. 
put this back down in here just like that all right oops I am going to put this shield back on here little guys should accommodate it just fine like that This, like I said, it's not a gaming laptop, so it's not going to be working that drive too awfully hard. But they're going to actually do some light video editing and rendering on this. They wanted more RAM, more storage space. <clears throat> All right, so gonna, we're good. Everything's back. Of course, here's our Wi-Fi 6 card right here. And put this on. And I'm going to wait to put all the screws back in. I'm not going to push down too far because, like I said, the screws are going to hold that up. But I am going to tighten those down because that looks ugly. So we're nice and snug along the back here. I'll put these in when I'm all done. So this little guy, we're gonna put in our enclosure here. This is a USB to NVMe M.2 adapter. It's actually an enclosure you can put all the different size drives in. It's, it's toolless. The drive's gonna snap over this little rubber grommet, which in this case I have to move from here for the 2280 down to here. I have a link down below where you can buy one of these. It's <coughs> USB-C to USB-A, but it comes with both cables, C on both ends. So what I got to do now, though, is I have to pop this little grommet out here. All right, guys, I took the grommet out here and I moved it down here. You just got to kind of poke it in there. It's not too big a deal. To accommodate our 2242 M.2 drive, we're going to pop it in the slot here. Now, remember, Windows is installed on this drive, not the one we just put in the computer. So that's going to hold it in there. We'll cover it up just like that. Lock it in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to boot off of this. We're going to boot Windows off of this. So every computer is different on how you get to the boot menu, but on these Dells, let me open the lid here, guys. So I just turn it on. Right now, it won't do anything because it's got a blank drive in there. So we're going to put in our USB port. <clears throat> we're going to boot off of this and then clone this onto the drive that I just installed, the one terabyte. So, uh, on the Dells, most of them, it's F12 to get to our one-time boot menu, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here. By the way, the power button on this model is also a f fingerprint sensor, which is kind of nice. A lot of the new Dells are like that, right on the power button. So we're going to turn it on. Not sure if I got it or not. Oh, it's on. Got to start hitting the F12 key here. Oh, I thought I had it on. All right. So with the new RAM in there, got to be patient because it might take a minute for it to post. I'm just watching my power light over here. There it goes. So start tapping the F12 key. We should get to the one-time boot menu. There we go. All right, so now we got our boot menu. So this is this is new on these models, this type of boot menu. So over here, are our, our one-time boot settings. Here's our boot devices. It's showing the Windows Boot Manager, which is located on this drive. So I'm going to choose that and hit Enter, and it should boot off of this. You can see it's booting into Windows off of this adapter here. I've done. I've used a Cronus True Image in a lot of different ways. Of course, I have the full commercial version here in my store that we use all the time. But if you try to do this in reverse, it just won't work with the proprietary Cronus. So I've already got it. Let me see if I can bring that up just a hair. Bring the screen up. Sorry about the glossy screen. So here's the Cronus True Image for, um, for crucial drives. I've already, insta already installed it on the drive here. Um, I'll have a link down below where you can download this from Crucial's website. So we're going to double click the cloning software. 
because we want to get all of this under the new one terabyte we just put inside. Our battery's pretty charged. This process shouldn't take too long because there's no customer data on here yet. It's just a Windows install basically and all the Dell stuff. <clears throat> all right, so it comes up to the menu. We're going to click on clone disk. This will take a brief amount of time. And automatic is always recommended, which I'm going to choose. We're going to hit next. And it's asking for our source drive, which in this case is right here. Disk 2 is our 128 gig drive, NVMe. So we're going to hit next. Shows you your partition layouts down here. Click next. And we're going to choose the new one terabyte right here on the top, not initialized, 931.5 gigabytes. That's our destination, or our target disk. Click on next. And this is a before and after what it's going to look like. So we're going to have lots of free space. So simply click on proceed. And again, I've done these before on these new models. This process only takes, honestly, a few minutes because we're going SSD to SSD. But this method here is, I, like I said, I'm using the crucial free Acronis True Image um, right from Crucial's website. You know, Western Digital, there's a lot of different manufacturers that use the Acronis. So I'm going to let this copy. What you can see, it's already started. It shouldn't take too long. When it's just about done, I'll come back and we'll wrap it up. All right, guys, you can see it's just about done here. This whole process took all of about maybe two, two and a half minutes. So we're going to just let it finish up here. It shouldn't be too long. Just don't unplug your drive. Um, with whatever adapter you're using. These adapters that I'm using here are great. They've really never failed me. I have several of them I use every day when we have to do a clone like this. But again, we typically do our clones on our cloning station over there. But for demonstration purposes, I want to show you how simple this software is. Acronis is good software. Now, if you own the paid version of Acronis, you can get for like 39 bucks. You can clone any drive with it. Works well. So the disk was successfully cloned. We're going to turn off the computer, remove the source drive, which is right here. Hit OK. We're going to shut it down real quick. <clears throat> and then we'll turn it back on. It should boot up of our new one terabyte drive. All right. So we don't need that little one in there anymore. So you can see it's right there. So now I'll just go ahead and turn it back on. <clears throat> now whether you had data on here or not, it doesn't matter. It still would have cloned, but you know, might have took a little longer. But going from SSD to SSD, it does go relatively quick. I use all the different cloning software, the Mac Green Reflex 7, the Mini Tool Partition Wizard. Of course, Acronis. There you go. So let's real quick open up Task Manager here. I'll go to Performance. Here's our 16 gigs of RAM. We're good to go there. And just real quick on Pile Explorer, this PC. Here's our new one terabyte NVMe SSD, our P5. So that was a good clone. Went pretty quick. Nice little upgrade. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like it, give me a like. If you really liked it, give me a sub. I'd appreciate it. I thank you for watching, and have a great day.